Welcome back to the Bankers Leadership Series on Data Analytics in association with Click. In Chapter 4 of this five-part video series, we look at the increasing use of mobile devices, at the ability to gather and analyze customer data, and advances in location technology, and how that's providing opportunities for banking. So Duncan, what is the role of geoanalytics? Sure. So I guess, I guess if we're starting at the, the simple end of the spectrum, it's about understanding some basic things about our customers and our employees. So um, in the beginning, you know, the ability to look at the location of our customers, where they live, on a map, um, then taking it to the next level and saying, well, where are our branches? Where are our ATMs? Where do we have sales advisors? Where do we have commercial relationship managers? And what is the relationship between our customers and, and our employees? And do we have the right people in the right place? Um, then kind of taking it to the next level saying well um, what other information can I apply what public information can I can I use to, to add some value to, to what I already know so I could look at uh, population gen density I could look at GDP per head to try and figure out if it was an affluent area or not um, I could look at uh, external data like weather you know, is there a storm in a specific, specific place do we need to service our customers in, in a specific way according to the time of year, you know, is a seasonality that I can take advantage of. Um, that might be looking at uh, aggregate information on our customers. Is there a, is there a hot spot of, of risk in a specific region? You know, do I have a, a trend in delinquencies coming from mortgages and properties in a specific town or city? So what can I do with that information once I've got it? And what we try to do with Click is to take it to the next level and say, okay, that's not just, it's not just about plotting information on a map, but what kind of more complex geoanalytics calculations can I perform in order to calculate, say, how far it is to my nearest branch or ATM? And what, what can I do with that information to make it more useful for our customers? I, th I think this is a great example of where you can mix um, a, a non-traditional data source with a, with a more traditional data source. So you're taking something, as, as Duncan says, where you've got information about where your ATMs are, where your branches are, and then you take your customer data and overlay that onto a map. I mean, in the, apart from all the examples you gave in the consumer space, which I absolutely agree with, where is the best place for a banking center? Where are you going to put an ATM? And then all the risk analytics that you talked about, which I thought were very interesting. And you know, the other things we can do is, from the transaction services side of the house, we can look at th simple things like, where is the money going? So if you think of, we're paying, you know, our clients are using our facilities to pay money all over the world. Now, if I think about that from a network perspective, do I then sort of think about that, well, actually, am I, do I have you know, the right places and am I servicing people in the right way across the world? And do they have the right access to the facilities and services that they need and that I'm prepared to provide? So. Some of that stuff can, can be extremely useful. So it's overlaying that map, if you like, that external data. I mean, the map of the world doesn't change, hopefully. Um, with information about your customer demographics, I think can be really powerful as a tool to help you essentially provide better business outcomes for your clients. Chame? No, I agree completely. Uh, I think that geolocalization uh, gives you a very powerful insight. Uh, for example, in our case, uh, we are using uh, many, many times in, in fraud detection. We combine graph analytics with maps, and it's it's very easy to see two operations that they are too far away to go with car or with no work, just walking, and then it's uh, just a suspicious for for a for a fraud, for example. Uh, another another use that we have is just to make predictions uh, in relation in relation with uh, where are you living. Uh, in which schools are you moving, or you take your children to the school, or just the gym, things like this, uh, gives you more information about the customers, and you can offer better services, or can, you can know better them. Okay, and finally, another example that we, uh, I could give you is uh, well, we have um, we have a lot of mobility in our sales force. Okay, we have. Uh, all, all, all employees moving around the city, visiting, okay, making making visits. So after one visit, we can offer to the to our employee which is the best visit that can, they can do now. The next ones, okay, then in the next visit that they can do in the street, just with a lot of information of the customers that they have around around him in that moment. That's really interesting. So I'm aware of some POCs that are looking at that type of thing, where actually. It, it comes back to the strengthening the relationship in the customer. So if you have a, a specific customer coming in and you're, you're a partner with one of the vendors, 
um, a provider, you know, what's the opportunity to bring those two together, potentially with you know, targeted offers where you can both bring bits of information together um, to provide the customer a better experience or a better product, possibly a discount. Um, so I think there's a lot of really interesting, really interesting unexplored ideas around that, particularly with the new regulation coming in, allowing that sharing of information mm -hmm. and that ecosystem developing. It's no longer a monolith that holds that information. It's now that ecosystem that is much more interconnected between many more different parties. Yeah, and I think I think it's more competitive now as well. So with with PSD two and with with banks having to expose more information through APIs, some of the early APIs we've worked with have seen. Uh, banks publish the locations of their offices, location of their branches and their ATMs, not just their own ones, but we can, we can look at their competitors as well. Yeah. So you can see where your branch is relative to your competitors and look at the mix of products and services and like you say, optimize the services in a specific branch to the requirements of those users who, who live within that area. It's very much about client centricity, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, we, in many cases, our clients might have design documentation. For example, it could be a trade agreement, it could be a new account opening agreement or anything else. Now, why not simply say to the client, this is the agreement, we need you to sign it, you might need to validate your identity with a, your passport or your identity card, whatever it is. Here's the address of the nearest branch and here's several ways you can get there. Now that's a really simplistic example, but you're essentially enriching mm. the client experience. You're taking a workload off them um, so they don't have to figure out, well, where is your branch? They can just go. But how do you think it can be really transformational at uh, sort of at the very for the field employees at the very local level? How can it be? How can using geo analytics be really transformational? I, I think we're only just beginning really to explore the boundaries of what's possible with geolocation sensitivity. I think if I was to postulate um, a potential area would be maybe in the areas of wealth management and those sort of things, whereby you're looking you're looking at the demographics that you spoke to around the propensity for the area in terms of how many people live there, their kind of their profile and that sort of stuff, and then you might look at the default rates and everything else. And maybe that's a good place yeah. for you to go and enrich and offer, you know, particular types of services. So I I would say from an efficiency perspective, it potentially makes us more efficient in the way that we deploy services to our clients, at the same token more responding to their needs, because we feel we can profile them Within a, with a degree of accuracy in terms of how they might represent themselves. No, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. You know, geolocation historically has been something that scientists did. You know, it's about predicting <laughs> hurricanes, and <laughs> yeah. it, it's a very, relatively new thing to see it in you know, the financial services market or you know, other industries, um, much of it driven by technology. So, I mean, for me, one of the interesting things, I guess this builds on your point, is actually around, you know, it's not just understanding the map that it goes on, but it's also how do we use where people are and what information is fed to them. So coming back to some of the things we spoke about earlier around um, you know, what information is fed depending on your location, mm -hmm. or actually are we looking at understanding the location of the customer and actually how we better service them. So if a wealth client walks into a branch, you know, can we get someone to go and meet them rather than you know, for them to wait in the queue? You know, or is there a way of highlighting that actually this person could be using an automated service? Is there a way of filtering them through that? Can we send them a text message perhaps? Or If we think back to our fraud and governance, right? Mm. So we talk about it in the context of what it means to us. But our clients would also, there is, a, I mean, as a former treasurer, for example, you, we might have policies around where you can and cannot approve things from. Mm. Right. So, for example, if I can tell, let's say you're on your mobile device and you're looking to approve a payment, it might be my company's policy that you can only approve payments if you're located within one of our offices. So if I could take that two-factor authentication, I'm essentially saying where you are and what you're allowed to do, do they add up to, yes, you're allowed to do this. If you're trying to approve it from the middle of a, a nightclub, for example, I might sort of say, mm, I'm not so sure, you know, no, we're not making any assumptions here, but our policy says you need to be in one of our offices to do this from the point of view of our own fraud and integrity. So geolocation, I think, can also, to some extent, help our clients have a greater de degree of confidence, particularly in the corporate space, over what their clients, they're enabling their people to do with their financial operations. Yeah, and to Chavez's point on fraud detection, I mean, if, if you're talking about knowing where the customer is located, if the payment location and the um, the device location is the same, then, then you have a greater 
uh, confidence level. Yeah, we are using a lot of in fraud detection. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So in Chapter 5 of the Bankers Leadership Series, in association with Click, we're actually going to look at the future of business intelligence and data analytics.